This is Burton's hometown hero. It sits proud of place as one of their flagship models in the family tree collection. It's available as a kids, a split board and a specced up limited X edition for this winter. But we're here taking a look at the classic version, the daily driver, the all-terrain freeride focused charger. If you're after a board to get deep in the trees, lay down wide open carves on the groomers and everything in between, this one is packed with precision, power and panache. To give you some idea of what it's capable of, this is what Mark McMorris was riding during his win in the opening round of the Natural Selection Tour last season. So think backcountry freestyle, slashy turns and full gas charging through the powder fields. It's built with a directional shape and outline. So the setback camber begins right at the tail here and it goes all the way up beyond the front inserts where it then shifts into a long progressive nose rocker. That's combined with a 12 millimeter taper and a pretty nimble side cut. So this makes it your best friend on a full blown powder day as the board is able to plane over the snow surface and make super quick agile turns. But thanks to Burton's balanced free ride geometry, once you're back on the hard pack, you get all the benefits of the power and the precision from that camber without any of that directional feel that you have up in the nose. This is what's gonna make things like riding switch super easy. That's because the stance is centered on the board's contact area. So what that means is that the taper in the nose only occurs outside of the contact points. So it really only comes into play in powder conditions and the board will ride almost like more of a true twin when you're on the piste. And then in terms of the core, well, there certainly aren't stiffer boards out there, but the hometown hero won't really leave you wanting for more when you find yourself in steeper, more technical terrain. The fiberglass layers that wrap around the wood core are enhanced with carbon that's set at a 45 degree angle, which give it a really nice torsional rigidity. This is what's going to help the board to hold strong through a turn and manage all those increased forces that you can really put into it. But in between the feet, it's still relatively soft flexing, making it pretty confidence inspiring to ride at slower speeds or even just to make quick adjustments when you're in a tight spot. And the wood core itself is quite different from what you've probably come to expect from a lot of other brands. In addition to the vertical stringers running through the board's length, the dual zone construction also places stringers horizontally along the edge. So this gives you some added feel right under your feet and it allows you to transfer power directly out to the rails of the board. This is just one of the reasons why it is such a fun board to get your elbows down and really rip through a carve on. It really is incredibly stable at higher speeds when you turn the dials up to 11. And it's not just the configuration of the wood stringers but the actual thickness of the core itself that has also been optimized. Because of Burton's squeeze box technology, the core is milled to varying thicknesses throughout its length with thinner, more naturally flexing zones directly underfoot and then thicker, more reinforced sections milled to the outside of both the inserts. The result of this is improved natural flex, increased ollie power and loads of stability wherever you find yourself on the mountain. For me, I have to say this is probably my favourite snowboard from Burton. I'd actually go further and say it's one of my all-time favourite snowboards for just about every day of the season, aside from the ones that are solely dedicated to the park. It's like snowboarding in HD. The precision and the response and accuracy on offer are really incredible. And yet it still has the manoeuvrability of a softer flexing board, as well as the switch performance of pretty much a true twin. Now I know there are more dedicated shapes out there for the most purest of powder hounds, but if we're being honest, most resorts are tracked by mid-morning and those shapes can often become a bit of a chore to ride by lunchtime. Not so for the hometown hero. This thing just keeps on trucking and performing like a dream, even when everyone around you is having a nightmare. Not all heroes wear capes, but this one is well deserving of its title. Thanks for watching this review of the Burton Hometown Hero. If you have any questions about it, then please do stick them down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel where this year we're gonna be dropping a whole bunch more snowboard product reviews for you guys. Thanks again and we will see you in the next video.